In this video, I'm going to show how I applied the second coat of undercoating to the wheel wells of my 2020 Chevrolet Colorado. I'll be removing the wheel well skirts and reinstalling them during the video. General Motors refers to this part as a fender splash shield. And the reason I apply undercoating is because I live in Michigan and in the winter we salt the roads. That road salt will rust away the body on a vehicle. And around here you'll see older trucks with the wheel wells rotted out. It looks terrible. Undercoating is uh, an affordable, easy way to reduce the likelihood that you're going to have a corroded out body. It's going to extend the life of your vehicle and it's something anybody can do in their own driveway. It's not really that difficult. If you've already undercoated a vehicle, this video isn't for you. It's kind of a long video and I, I try to explain what I'm doing uh, to, from the standpoint of maybe somebody who wants to do this or has never done this and just to try to show that it's really not that difficult. Now the instructions in this video are specific to a second generation Chevrolet Colorado or GMC Canyon. However, the methods can be applied to any sort of vehicle, not just a pickup truck or not specifically those trucks. Full disclaimer, I've already finished the work. I've actually been shooting the video off and on over the course of nine days and I decided to reshoot the beginning of this video where I explain to you the items that I use in the video. Disclaimer, there's background noise. I've got a highway behind me. I've already had to turn off the camera because of a police siren. I, I've got a railroad nearby. You never know when they might come by. I'm in the flight path of an international airport and sometimes we've got a plane every 30 seconds. Additionally, my neighborhood, my street seems to be a cut through and there's lots of people that like to drive through here and they have a tendency to make noise and my neighbors are kind of loud. So full disclaimer, oh also it's windy today and I don't have the wind mic on this camera. So the audio quality may not be so good in this video. Additionally, because I shot it over several days, uh, some of the footage might hop around. I might repeat myself a few times or things like that. You're also going to see things from different angles because I have four wheel wells to work with. I'm taking the best footage from each location. I also use three different cameras. So the video and audio quality is going to be a little bit different based on the cameras. I've got to do a lot of editing to this video and I haven't even really done much of that yet. So I don't even know at this point how it's going to turn out. All that aside, let me start off with the undercoating. So I'm simply using Rust-Oleum undercoating. I bought this at the local Meyer store. Uh, for those who don't live in my area, Meyers is kind of like Walmart, but better. I found this in the paint department. They had a different brand of undercoating in the automotive department. If you go to an auto parts store, a hardware store, a big box home improvement store, you'll find undercoating in the paint department or automotive department. And it really doesn't matter what brand you use. Most of the undercoating you're going to find is either going to be black or brown. I've used different brands before in the past undercoating pickup trucks and I haven't had an issue mixing and matching. But for this, I just stick with the Rust-Oleum. Now as far as tools go, in order to remove the skirts from the wheel wells so you can get in there and clean them and apply undercoating, you're going to need a few different tools. Now you don't have to use the exact same tools I have, but these are a demonstration of the kind of tools that you're going to need. So this is an upholstery removal tool. This one is actually from Mac Tools. You don't have to go on a tool truck to buy this, but you can if you want. Or you can find these at automotive repair stores, or automotive parts stores I should say, or even online, say like Amazon. And you're going to need the upholstery removal tool to remove two retainers that are up in the rear, rear, rear ah, can't talk, up in the rear wheel well. They're mounted up in the top and you simply put the upholstery tool in and pry it out. Now, I had originally removed two from the right side that would not go back in, and I've been driving around for about 14 months without two of them in the right-hand side. The other fasteners are able to keep the skirt in there just fine. On the left side, I was able to reuse them once, but trying a second time, it didn't work. So I found the General Motors part number for that and I'll include that in the description section below but you can also use aftermarket retainers that are very similar these just simply just push in and as you push them in they expand out so 
feel free to either not reinstall them, try to reinstall them, or pick up an aftermarket equivalent or go down to your dealership to get retainers that will work. You're going to need a T15 screwdriver, but there's not a lot of clearance between the tire and the wheel well, so you're going to need something that's kind of low profile. So I use this T15 screwdriver. This one's from Snap-on Tools. You don't have to, once again, you don't have to go on a tool truck, but I like the fact that I can get a lot of torque with this grip on this screwdriver. So for the areas where I had clearance, I used that. Here's a simple Craftsman T15 screwdriver. It's a little bit shorter. But for the areas where there isn't a lot of room, I used a simple Torx key. Now this is a low profile Torx key set from Eklund. It's made in America and I ordered this off of Amazon.com. And you can use this to get into those tight places. If you don't have one of these or you don't want to get one of these, you can get a Torx bit socket like what you would have for uh, the screwdrivers with the interchangeable sockets and it simply so slides into this quarter inch drive socket on this quarter inch drive ratchet and I recommend using the quarter inch drive because this is going to be small and it's going to help you get into a tight place. If you don't have the bit and uh, a socket you could get a dedicated socket. Now neither one of these are T15s but these are the smallest examples I had of sockets that you can get once again, you can find these at an auto parts store, hardware store, something like that. Order them online. Get them in a set. Get them individually. It doesn't matter. Or you could use one of these sets of Torx wrenches here, but this won't have enough clearance to get into those tight places. So I would use this in place of, say, a T15 screwdriver. And that's going to be for these fasteners that are all over in the wheel well. Most of the wheel well is held in with these screws that are available. If you lose any or, or they're rusted out, you want to replace them, they're available from your GM dealership. I'll include a part number in the description section below. These also hold on uh, the factory installed, they're not really mud flaps, they're actually called, in the front they're called fender protection film. That's this piece right here. And in the back, one piece is called a rear shield and the other one's called a side cover and those are attached with these screws so you're gonna you're gonna need at least two different I would say at least two different uh, Torx screwdriver tool bit wrenches whatever keys probably your best bet that's gonna one size fits all is gonna be a ratchet though and that's also gonna be the fastest now with regard to the front fender protector I am absolutely going to recommend that you go to your GM dealership and you get some of these retainers. These, this little white retainer here simply slides in. See if I can get it in here in the shot. Simply slides in and this is how you're going to reattach this to the truck. I demonstrate this in the video. And the reason I recommend that you go ahead and buy four of these before you get started is because more than likely you're not going to be able to reuse these. I was able to uh, remove these in the past, uh, the first time, and reuse the, the fasteners once. But the second time around, I was able to reuse two, and the other two just broke off. It's just easier. They're not that expensive. It's just easier to get a couple of these. And this is something that you're going to remove with the upholstery removal tool. And hopefully uh, the demonstration I did in the video isn't too bad. One last thing I'm going to recommend is you get a color matching paint pen. In this case, I've got this blue pen from the GM dealership that matches the paint on my truck. When you remove these front protectors, you may end up scratching up the blue finish underneath them. Now, there's not a whole lot to worry about. That blue finish is actually a special coating that runs along the bottom of the truck. It's actually thicker than regular paint, and it's designed to protect against stone chips and, and uh, rock salt and things like that. But you will scuff it up a little bit, and then it comes out white. Now, it's all undercover, but if you've got the touch-up pin, you can go ahead and, and do that, as well as when you're pulling the wheel well skirts, you're going to get a chance, after you clean it off, you're going to get a chance to examine the wheel well, and if you have a little scratch or something like that, this little pin here comes in handy. It's also not a bad idea to uh, just have it in with your tools for your vehicle, especially if you've got a, a newer vehicle, just to handle little scuffs and scratches. It, it saves you a trip to the detailer. So I know that's been a, a, a lot to take in, but the video uh, is going to be fairly long. 
And if there are any questions, please include those in the comment section below. Any questions about why I did what I did or anything else like that. And once again, if you've already done undercoating, this video is not for you. Before I apply the undercoating, I've got to remove the skirt from the wheel well. There's several screws in here and I'll be using a T15 screwdriver for most of them. In some of the tight spots between the tire and the inside of the wheel well, I'll be using this smaller key. You can get in a set and I'll be using the T15. Additionally, there are these plastic retainers. There's two of them at the top of the wheel well. So I'll be using this removal tool. You can buy these at an auto parts store. You can order them online. You can even find them on a tool truck. More or less, you just slide this tool in underneath this pop rivet and pry it out. And once you do, you may not be able to reuse it. You can buy these at a GM dealership or you can buy the aftermarket equivalent at an auto parts store. You might have better luck at a mom and pop store. On the right hand side rear wheel well of the truck, these two retainers have been missing for over a year as I pulled the wheel wells last year to undercoat then and I never did replace them. On the other side, I was able to reinstall them. So if you want to replace them, the choice is yours. So you should be able to get most of these screws with the screwdriver, but for some places where the screwdriver is just too long, you can use this key. You insert the short end into the screw and just give it a turn to the left, counterclockwise, lefty loosey, to break it free. You'll get more torque using the short end than the long end when you go to initially loosen up the screw or tighten up the screw. Once you've got it loose, then flip it and use the long end, and now you've got more speed, and you can simply remove it, and then to go ahead and put it with the other screws somewhere where it's not going to blow away or roll away or something like that where you're not going to lose it. That's all there is to it. Then when you're done, just put all the fasteners in one place where they're not going to roll away or blow away or something like that. Just some place like the tailgate here where you can keep them all together for reinstallation. Something to be mindful of when doing this there is a fastener that's underneath this back protector here and here on the front mud flap, I guess you would call it, there is a fastener underneath here that you have to get to. This is held in with a retainer. There we go. Just slides right out of there. And then you're going to have to really kind of just work it. Take your thumb and work it. If you miss the fastener, you'll know because it won't move from that spot. And there you go. It's out. Now it's time to clean up this mess. You can see where I undercoated it last year, just a few months after I got it, as soon as the weather turned warm. I'm gonna have to clean this dirt out and I'm gonna have to clean up inside of this lip right here. 
see there's some dirt coming out of there. So I'm just going to use just uh, Dawn dish soap and water and clean it out with a nylon scrub brush. I'm also going to try to get on the back side here and back side here. So I'm going to have to crawl up underneath there and try to try to clean that out as well. The uh, spray from the garden hose should get most of it though. So I'll start by spraying it down. And up inside of the wheel well. That should get most of the dirt out. And it should blow off any of the undercoating I put on last year that really just didn't stick. And I'll simply follow up with a couple of the uh, nylon brushes I have. Just using some soap and water. This is just Dawn dish soap. You could use simple green or something like that. And I'm just going to try to break up the dirt that is in here. It's kind of caked on. I've got some smaller brushes that I can use if I need to. I can use an old toothbrush. Just the same brushes I use to clean off the wheels and the tires. And then hopefully like the uh, like the spray, if there's any undercoating that just didn't stick, it'll take that off too. Then up and under, gotta make sure I get in there. Put a little extra detail into that. When I'm done with this, I'll spray it off. I'll let everything air dry. I'll get some painter's tape and tape around the edge of the uh, wheel well. And then I should be able to apply the undercoating. I've just got to repeat this process for each wheel well and allow time to dry. The front wheel wells are similar to the rear, but I will say that you're going to have to use the key more than on the rear wheel wells. The clearance is not as good, but there's not as much clearance up front. And it might require you to be a bit adroit something else to note here this guard right here on the back of the front wheel well has a retainer and you're going to have to actually two retainers and you're going to have to kind of slide it in here and work it in there's a little clip here there's a cutout here so it's a little bit of work to put that back in also there's a fastener in the back here and some up top as well as three in the front that it might be easier to crawl underneath to get to. And I've done the same thing with the fasteners as I pulled the skirt out of the wheel well there or now that I'm ready to pull it all of the fasteners are up here in the front floorboard so I don't lose them. And just like the skirt from the rear wheel well just work it a little at a time. You can see there's debris back there and I missed a fastener. 
All right. So let's take a look inside of here. See, all of this is plastic. There's really nothing to worry about. But up in here, most of the undercoating stayed in place. A lot of debris in here. There's uh, some material here for its insulation to reduce the road noise up in the cab. So I've got to pull that out of the way. Stuff that up in a wheel well. And I need to clean this out and get in here. Get some more back there. Otherwise though, not too bad for a little bit more than a year. So I've given the wheel well time to dry while I was waiting. I took a rag and I wiped the inside out. I tried to get some of the dirt that just doesn't want to seem to come off. And I was able to remove some, but not all of it. I've also taped the edge of the wheel well here just with some painter's tape. I don't have to do any sort of precision work here. I'm just trying to keep any overspray off the edge. And I took a rag and wiped some of the areas again where water might have collected where it just wasn't drying out because it had pulled up. And I've tried removing some of this dirt a second time and really not had any good results with it, but I'm not worried about it overall. So what I'll be using is Rust-Oleum undercoating. This is the rubberized black. So it says that you should use this in temperatures above 50 degrees and below 85% humidity and allow about an hour to dry. So right now it's 87 degrees and about 53% humidity, I think, 50 something percent humidity, so we're okay. I've shaken the can for two minutes. I wanna make sure that it's mixed up really good. So what I'm gonna start off with is just spraying a level area, just to see how it comes out, make sure it's okay. Really all I'm trying to do is touch up the areas where it's flaked off. I didn't use any sandpaper or anything else like that when I undercoated this before. And the instructions on this don't say to use sandpaper, although some undercoating sprays do say to do that. I'd considered it, but I think everything's going to be okay based on the way the first application turned out. So I'm more or less just going to touch this up and overlap a little bit. And I'll be doing this in all the wheel wells. And I'll be spraying up and inside where I can. If I get some overspray or I get some on me, I've got some carburetor cleaner and a rag to take it off. So, time to get to it. I managed to get three wheel wells complete on one can. Now this is touch up, not complete spray, so you'd need more than that if you were starting from scratch. And with the front wheel wells, there's less to do. There's not as much up in the front here because it's all plastic once you get to a certain point. But you've got to do inside this cavity here where the fender meets the door and up inside the top of the fender. I was really surprised on one side in the back, the wheel well was in pretty good shape, but on the other side, some of it had flaked off. So you can see I sprayed undercoating in here last year to try to prevent corrosion from the inside out. So 
So this is the left rear, and that's not too bad. The right rear I had some down below, but overall, pretty good. Another thing is, when I was underneath trying to get inside the wheel well, I could also see the top of the wheel well here, and it allowed me to see some of the areas that I really couldn't see from the side of the wheel. So I've used up two cans. There's no sense in saving it. It's just gonna clog up and not work. <laughs> if I wanted to reuse it at a later point, it's one of those things where you wanna go ahead and just use it up right away. I did get some overspray on me, but it's nothing that a little bit of carburetor cleaner won't take care of. It doesn't look like I got any overspray on any part of the truck. I'm gonna go give it one last check and then clean it if necessary. And I'll let this set and either come back to it later today or tomorrow morning. There's no rain in the forecast, so I'm really not worried about anything. Something to note, when I sprayed inside the fender, I also got the inside here, but that's okay with me. I don't care if there's any spray in here, that's just going to provide additional corrosion protection and it's more or less out of sight, out of mind. Up to now, I've been using Rust-Oleum Rubberized Black Undercoating. I've got to do some touch-up, some places that I missed, and so I decided I would go ahead and try out Rust-Oleum Rubberized Black Undercoating Pro-Grade. What's the difference between the two of these? About $3 a can, but let's see for ourselves. So I've shaken the can up for a little bit more than two minutes. I don't know if you can see that there, but definitely missed some there, up there, and a few other spots. So. We change hands here and let's just see what the prograde looks like. Might be a little thicker. Otherwise, though, it's the same color. Yeah, that's really about it. I'd say it's probably going on a little bit thicker. So let me finish this up and get the skirts back in the wheel wells. After using both the regular Rust-Oleum undercoating and the Rust-Oleum undercoating Pro-Grade, I'd say that it looks to me like the Pro-Grade goes on a little bit thicker. It's got a little bit more of a gloss black finish. If I had to do this all over again, I would have just used the Pro-Grade. I'm not saying that the, the regular undercoating is, is, there's anything wrong with it, but I kind of like the way that this went on a little bit more so than this. Otherwise though, I'm pretty satisfied with my experience using Rust-Oleum in the past and for this job. So here you can see the wheel well skirt has been removed. I'm going to go ahead and rinse it off with a garden hose. When I removed the skirt for the left front wheel well, I noticed it was torn. So I'm going to be doing a simple fix from the backside with some Gorilla Tape. All fixed. So it's been two hours. The additional undercoating is dry. I'm going to go ahead and remove the painter's tape and get these wheel well skirts back in. Installation is pretty much opposite of removal. Just be mindful that uh, if you have extra screws left over that you forgot something. There's a 
plastic retainer in here and it needs to be turned so that it is up and down lengthwise. There is a groove right here that should line up. And it's easier to install this with the wheel well skirt out of the way. So either put this in first or pull back the skirt like I have here and it's going to take some working back and forth but you should be able to slide it up and under. It would be easier if I was using two hands. I just needed two hands in order to do this but it just slides up and under and it's ready to go. Reinstalling the skirt is not difficult at all. Something that I'm going to forego is reinstalling these retainers. I'm just going to leave them out on the two rear wheel wells. It should be just fine with all the screws. So I thought it over and I decided that I don't want to leave these openings exposed where salt spray can get introduced into the wheel well. Even though it's been undercoated twice and on one side of the back of the truck I've had two of these missing for over a year, I've decided that I want to go ahead and put a retainer in there. So I went to the local Chevrolet dealer where I buy all my parts and I asked them to get me a, a few of these. Unfortunately, in the parts computer, the diagram and parts list for these wheel wells, for these skirts, for the fender and the bed area, they're really, really vague. And th the names that they give some of these parts, you know, this is a protector, this is a shield, it's and everything's a retainer right and not even even the, the listings for the retainers aren't exactly um, aren't, aren't exactly uh, very descriptive so he gave me one of these to try out and he said see if this will fit so I don't have a part number for it but I'm gonna see if it fits this is just like something you could buy at an auto parts store aftermarket getting the camera angle just right so I've already messed with this and I had to work it back and forth really had to wiggle it to get it up in there so what I ended up doing was giving it a twist as I put it in twist I twisted it clockwise there and managed to get it in there so that should do the job the soundproofing that goes into the front wheel well has a plastic retainer on it. On the back side of that retainer is a threaded hole. And inside the wheel well, there should be right here the attachment. It simply just presses on there, and then you just tuck the soundproofing in. That's it. So with these white retainers here that hold on the front, really wouldn't call it a mud flap, I'd call it more of a mud shield. Sometimes they crack, sometimes you break them off. You can buy new ones at the local GM dealership. Sometimes they'll both come off with it, sometimes uh, neither will come off with it, sometimes you get one of each. The easiest way I've found to remove it is to slide the upholstery removal tool underneath the round disc if there's any of it left to get as much underneath as much as possible and just give it a twist Let's see if I can get it up under both sides there there we go come up from underneath and just give it a twist and it comes right out so I've scratched up the paint a little bit I'm gonna go ahead and use this touch-up pen I got from the dealership to take care of this now this right here is not paint down below they've got a protective coating to protect against rock chips and road salt and things like that but it wouldn't be a bad idea to touch that up too simply apply it 
like nail polish or model paint. That's all there is to it. To reinstall the front splash shield, you're going to probably have to replace this fastener. It's available at your local GM dealership. Simply remove it here from the bag. In order to install the fastener, you slide it in with the prongs facing outward. You just line it up on top of these two channels, the round piece here, and just push it back and it's ready to go. And when you install this, there's going to be a hole for this little catch here at the bottom. And you're going to rock it into place. Hopefully this shows up with this uh, odd camera angle. So you've got your two holes here for your fasteners. And down below here, there is a little square cutout for this little hook. So what I've found tends to work pretty well is just line it up over these holes and push it in place. And then just sort of, this is somewhat flexible, just sort of bend it back and pop it in there and it'll stay. Now I've just got to put in these fasteners here. Just wiggle all this into place and I can use the Torx key here to tighten it down. If I'm having some trouble getting the long end in there, I can always just use the short end. And I might have to work it back and forth a little bit here to try to get bite into that retainer that's on the other side. It's starting to go in. Unfortunately, I might be blocking the shot here, trying to show, but it's going to be a little bit time consuming. Or I can use a ratchet. Go ahead and put the back one in there. Set the ratchet to tighten it down. Start it by hand and spin it. Then just apply some torque and it'll tighten right down. Once it starts to get tight, just give it a little bit more of a turn. You don't have to, you don't have to break it off or strip it out or anything else like that. This ratchet makes it easier to do the front one here. And that's all there is to it. This will probably turn out to be the longest YouTube video that I have published. I put three weekends and a few weekdays into it. I used three different cameras, including a new one that I'm still working the bugs out of. I tried using multiple camera angles and tried to use what I had as far as shooting the video while I was working on the vehicle. So it didn't turn out as well as I wanted. However, I put a lot of detail into the video because this is geared towards somebody who maybe doesn't have a lot of experience working on vehicles. I see a lot of how-to videos out there that leave out important things like where do you find parts, what kind of tools do you use, how do you fix something if you don't get it right, watch out for this, watch out for that. Just little tips and tricks and things that people pick up over time when they're into doing projects or when they're in skilled trades or that sort of thing. Making this video has been a learning experience for me as well because I haven't put this much time into a video before and I'm not sure if I ever want to do that sort of thing again. But this is what I do on my channel. I make the videos I make my way and they're not for everybody. But hopefully there is somebody out there who found this video or some part of this video useful. Thanks for watching.